everybody and welcome to our insects up close program and they're going to be so close to you through your computer or your technology screen because we wanted to go ahead and do this program virtually this is a program put on through jefferson county conservation and also the iowa department of natural resources water trail and so this is a promotion of the water trails that we have all across the state, but especially the one that we have down in Van Buren County along the Des Moines River. And one of the things that we have lots of around there is insects. So we brought in one of our good friends and entomologist Moni Hain to talk about insects and teach me and you guys a little bit more about insects. So here we go. This is the Easter type. Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. Be you look at it and go, but it's not yellow. The Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is usually yellow and black striped. This is the female morph. The females, there are a few black morphs. And if you look, there's still some black lines on the underside. You see the blue that tells you and the, and the tail tells you it's a, a swallowtail. But only if they find a black swallowtail that's big like this with the stripe on the underside and it's an eastern tiger swallowtail, only the females are black. There's no males that are this black morph or morphological change. For some reason, there's a few of the females that have this dark and black coloration. Um, I, I don't know if I can open it because she might fly away. So as you can see, the, the blue on the tail part, around the tail and the orange, this tells you that it is a Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. It's also very large, but there's still some black lines that show the tiger part. But again, this is the, a female, and I know it's a female because it's the black morph, morph is what we call it of the eastern swallow t uh, eastern tiger swallowtail and the tigers have stripes of course and that's where it gets its name um, do you want to look a little at the morphology of this while we've got it you can see the mouth part has is it's a tube but she curls it up into a little spiral and then when she wants to to lick something See if she can, will unfurl this. They unfurl it to sip the nectar out of the flowers. You can tell it's a butterfly because the butterflies have very long, narrow antenna with a little, tiny little club on the end. Moths have very feathered antennas. Butterflies have very narrow antenna. And so this is a great picture of her showing you her antenna, her coiled mouth, and a tube, and this is just like a straw. She'll send that, put that straw out to, to suck nectar off of the flowers when you see them feeding. It's just like a, see, it's like a tongue, except it's a straw. It'll suck the, the nectar out. We just caught the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. The Eastern Swallow Tiger, tiger Swallowtail has the, is yellow with the black stripes, which gives it the tiger name. They're yellow with those black, and then they have blue along the border of the hind wing, and they have tails, so that's where the swallow tail name comes from. I don't know if I can open it up a little bit. Earlier, we found the blue, the, the black morph being the female. I don't know if this is a male or a female eastern tiger swallowtail because they can, the yellow ones can be both male or female. Again, we can, you can see the core coiled mouth that it uses, the straw for sucking the nectar out of flowers, the antenna that's very narrow with the club on the end, and just just for fun, you see the abdomen is yellow and black striped. This has a really broad abdomen. I'm guessing it could be a female because she may be out laying eggs. The butterflies feed on nectar. 
The caterpillars feed on a wide number of different plants. I was going to try to see if I could open it without losing the butterfly so you can see the beautiful color of the blues on the hind wing. So this is what the tiger, eastern tiger swallowtail looks like. And this is the more common one that we see, and there's been a lot this year. The black female morph is, is you don't see very often at all, but we were lucky to get one this morning. Today we have caught a bumblebee, and I put the bumblebee in the cooler so that it would sit still long enough we could take its picture. It was feeding on the flowers out here in the prairie. Um, this bumblebee, it is the common eastern bumblebee. As it starts to warm up, it will move more. I just put it though on a little bit of ice for just a couple of minutes to slow it down so that we could show it to you. I didn't want to handle the bumblebee because it could sting me. Female bumblebees sting. The male bumblebees can't sting. It's actually, the stinger is actually what lays the eggs. So this bumblebee is starting to warm up. Bumblebees have fuzzy black and yellow parts on their body. And I always said if they weren't stinging, they would be so fuzzy, it'd be kind of like having a teddy bear. But unfortunately they sting, so we shouldn't handle them. This is the widow skimmer dragonfly. The skimmers are the smaller dragonflies. The body is not that long. Uh, the widow skimmer has the dark patches next to the body. There's one that looks similar that is called the common white tail that has the dark bands away from the body. So the stripe is out here, not next to the body. That's one way to tell the widow skimmer from the common white tail. But the, this widow skimmer is the female. The male actually has a white tail, if you will. The abdomen is white. The female has the, if, if I've got the lighting right here, uh, has the yellow bands down the side with the black stripe right down the back. So this is a female widow skimmer. The skimmers have small nymphs that are, live in the water. They live in the water all year and they overwinter in the water. And then in the summer when it warms up, the nymphs will then emerge and split their skin and come out as this adult dragonfly. So the skimmers are one kind of dragonfly. Dragonflies have these great big eyes so they can see all around them. They're very good at at being able to see almost 360 degrees around them. If you, if I can hold him so that you can see her, so you can see these legs. See how the legs are kind of scooped shape? They fly through the air catching mosquitoes especially. Anything that's small and flying, but especially mosquitoes that they grab with these, those very spiny legs and so they can catch that mosquito in the air, then they go land and eat it. Chomp, 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 chomp. So that's those basket-like legs that can kind of scoop up the mosquitoes when they're flying through the air. So dragonflies are great to have around your yard because you know they're gonna be eating the mosquitoes, black flies, gnats, anything that's kind of a pest flying through the air. So that's our widow skimmer that we caught today. Here we have a plant hopper. As you look at that plant hopper, it almost looks like a piece of the plant. It's the green leaves uh, and the green of the flower of the plant, the whole flower, look just like the insect. And so he can camouflage. But this particular leaf hopper or plant hopper has the black stripe down the back, so it's the striped two-striped plant hopper. And they do hop. They have very big hind legs, strong hind legs that they could hop. He's sitting still for us. If we try to take his picture and have a shadow, he will go to the other side of the stem to try to hide from us. They suck a few little bit of juice out of plants, but they don't, they're not a pest. They only need a drink or two. It's not gonna hurt a plant. 
is a very dark black shiny gem and this be this bug it's actually a bug not a beetle it does look like a beetle but you can see if if we can if it'll slow down enough and we can get a good video to see the triangle on its shoulders it tells us that it's a a true bug and the true bugs we call bugs so it's an emity ebony bug It's a true bug and it'll suck the juices out of different plants. It's not a pest, it just takes a little drink. But the, the triangle on its shoulders is what tells us that it's a bug. So this is the ebony bug. Okay, what we have here is an inchworm. Now, right now he's not inching because we surprised him. And when we surprise an inchworm, they stand up and hold still and so that they look like part of the plant, like a leaf or a stem. If you see them on a tree, sometimes they look like a little twig. They can be as small as this one, which is maybe half an inch long, to up to two inches long, depending on uh, the different species. So the inchworms turn into moths that are in the geometrid family. And geo being like geomet geometry is a measurement. So that's kind of where the inchworm comes from. Inchworms for a caterpillar, they only have two little legs on the very back. Now all insects have six legs and there's six legs up by the head. And the head is right here. And the hind legs are back and the six legs are actually up here by its head. If you could really get in close, which is hard to do because this is so tiny and we don't have a zoom lens uh, with the video to show, but the six legs are actually up by the head and it's holding it up is just, it's uh, two major legs we call pro legs in the back. That's what holds all different caterpillars onto stems. When we have terrible winds like we had earlier this week, things, uh, those pro legs are really strong and hold them in place. This is the cabbage, imported cabbage worm butterfly. The white butterflies you typically see around from early spring all summer are the cabbage butterflies. These are the butterflies, those white butterflies are the ones that lay eggs on your cabbage and your kale and broccoli and where you get the little green worms. These are the ones that provide that. So when we find the white butterflies flying in our gardens, they're a pest. They've been introduced to this country. It's not a native one. So that's why they tend to go after our crops that we have. Um, they're still a pretty butterfly. They're white with some black markings, especially on the tips of the wings. So this is the imported cabbage worm. Some people call these moths, but they're not a moth. If you look at the antenna, the antenna is a stem with a knob on the end. So this is a butterfly, not a moth. Moths have very feathery antennas, not the very simple antennas like this one has. We have just found and captured the checkered white butterfly. Unlike the white cabbage butterfly that's a pest and a nuisance in our gardens, this checkered white is a native butterfly. It does lay eggs on the wild mustards and plants that are in the cabbage family, but it is not a nuisance for our gardens. So this is the checkered white butterfly. This is the first time I have gotten to see it in Iowa. Let me see if I can turn it around so that you can see a little more. Of, it's got the clubbed antenna. It has the coiled mouth parts. Let me turn it sideways maybe to see the coiled mouth part. But you can see that it does have a checkerboard for its wings. It's not just plain white like the other butterfly is. It has the checkered wings. So isn't that cool? 
first time I got to see it, so I'm excited to see the checkered white butterfly. Okay, here is a little grasshopper. This is one of the green grasshoppers. I'm not sure which species it is. We can tell it's a grasshopper by its short antenna. Grasshoppers have great big hind legs to help them jump, and they can jump far and fast. This is a nymph. The nymphs are the baby or the young grasshoppers that don't have their full wings yet. By fall, they will have molted or shed their skin a couple of times, and they end up, when they are full grown, to have wings that help them to fly. So this one is still a baby. It can't fly, but it can hop. And if we get too close, we'll see if it hops. But right now we can get a good picture. Oh, there it went. <laughs> this is a Japanese beetle. Japanese beetles are gorgeous. You can see that they have that copper colored wings. There's little black and white dots along the side of their abdomen. The top of them looks almost greenish with the sun shining on them. These little beetles cause a lot of damage. They have been introduced into the United States. They feed on grapes, grapevines. They feed on, they love purple palm trees in our yard. They like uh, the uh, um, basswood, linden trees. They love to eat roses. They're a, a real pest. They were introduced from Japan. It's a Japanese beetle. Introduced from Japan, and they're starting to move into Iowa. Several counties in Iowa now have the Japanese beetle. Uh, it is a pest. That's the adult that was feeding on foliage. It lays eggs right about by mid-August. This is when it's laying. It's, it, all the eggs are laid usually by mid-August, and what they lay turn into grubs. The little worm that they lay is a C-shaped white grub. Those grubs actually are very destructive on our lawns and they will eat your turf. For golf courses, they are a real pest because they can eat large areas. They eat the roots of the grass. And then when you see that your grass is turning brown, you're going, well, why is the grass turning brown? I've watered it. There's no reason for it to turn brown. But if you would dig up a piece of that, that grass and just peel back, you will see these little C-shaped white grubs, and that's what's eating your turf. And unfortunately, if it's bad enough, you'll have to treat, but um, one of the, the things that we can put down is called milky spore. Milky spore is a fungus that you can spread on your turf, and it will, when the, that caterpillar or the worm eats the milky spore fungus it gets inside it and the fungus actually fills out the insect and kills it so that's one natural way of killing the Japanese beetle it takes several years to build up enough fungus uh, to to hit all the different Japanese beetle grubs but it is effective for Japanese beetle grubs if you have a problem